Hi, in this video, we're looking at writing ionic formulas. Now remember, an ionic substance is something that contains metals and nonmetals, um, and in different proportions. So that's kind of what we're gonna look at in this video is how do I figure out how many atoms of the metal and how many atoms of the nonmetal show up in a formula for an ionic substance. Now before we talk about elements at all, I actually just wanna do this with colors. So you'll see on the left here, I've got metals which form positive charges. Remember those metals have a uh, small, number small numbers of valence electrons and so they're gonna to wanna to lose those valence electrons. Uh, who do they lose them to? They lose them to the nonmetals who wanna gain them and so that's why they'll have negative charges on the right side there. Now, before we bring in element symbols and identities of substances, I just want to show you that this entire process can be done as long as you just know the charges for the substances. Um, then we'll bring in identities of elements and you'll see that, that it really is no different. So let's start by just making a compound between red and dark blue. Well, here's the name of the game. I want to bring in the smallest number of atoms of these things so that overall I have a charge of zero because that's how compounds are most stable when they don't have a charge. So let me bring in a red. Notice in the bottom right corner there, it shows us the overall charge is plus one. I have to bring in a dark blue. And look, when I add up these charges, overall they add up to zero. Uh, in a sense, the plus one is canceled out by the minus one. And so you end up having a stable substance. And so in this situation, the charges are plus one and minus one. I just need one of each. And there's my compound. Let's try another one, red and blue. So this is a plus one and a minus two. Well, if I just had one of each, my overall charge is not zero. It's negative one. So I have to add more of an element in order to get to an overall charge of zero. So I need to add one more red. And now you'll notice that two reds will cancel out that one negative two. Um, and that's uh, a good compound. So two reds, one blue. Let's try green and dark blue. Well, here's green, that's plus three. Uh, I bring in a dark blue. One of each would just give me a, a plus two charge overall. So I need to keep adding dark blues until I get down to zero, and there it is. Now I want you to notice, I have one plus three and three minus ones. We'll pick up on that in a second, but that would be the overall uh, substance there. One plus three and three minus ones. This one says make a compound with yellow and teal. Well, here's a yellow, here's a teal. Right now I have a minus one charge, so I need to add a yellow. Oh no, that gives me a plus one charge, so I add a teal. Damn, that gives me a minus two charge, so I add another yellow. Oh, I'm there. Now look, there are three plus twos and two minus threes. So there's kind of like a switch thing happening here. Again, I'm building up to that, so I'll show you what that means in just a second. All right, so let's connect this to the periodic table because we don't just have colors, we have elements. But as long as you know the charges and can do these with the colors, just like we've done in the last few uh, examples, then you should be just fine when you start to incorporate elements to it. It's really no different. Now, the reds that we've been using in these last few examples really line up with group one. Um, group one, all of those elements form a positive one charge. And so you can think of all group one elements as if they're reds. Uh, plus two, well, that's all of group two. Now in the transition metal area, that, that center area there, those do some weird things. Some of those elements can form multiple different charges. They're all positive, um, but there is no strong trend. So some of them are plus one, some of them are plus two and three. Gosh, some of them are plus four or five or seven even. And so really we'll, we'll kind of focus on that kind of off on its own uh, at a later time. But plus three would be where group 13 is. All those elements can be plus three uh, ions. Now in the group 14 area, they tend to actually really like to uh, covalently bond at the top. You've got some metalloids in there. Toward the bottom, you've got some post-transition metals. So group 14 will kind of leave off on its own for now too. But if you get to group 15, if you remember, they all have five valence electrons they'd really like to gain three more electrons to get up to eight. And so that's why all the group 15 elements will get a negative three charge. Same logic for group 16, they're just a little closer. They have six, they want two, so they'll get a negative two charge. And then finally, of course, all the halogens in group 17 want to form a negative one charge because they're only one electron away from being like a noble gas. So there we are, the periodic table gives us our colors. And as long as you can just focus on that charge as we build these formulas, you should be just fine. Let's do some real life examples. I've got K with a plus one charge and F with a minus one charge. 
Well, this was like our very first color example. And if you need to go back and take a look at that first example, do it. In this situation, again, I only just want to focus on the charge. I've got plus one and minus one. I just need one of each in order for these to be overall neutral. Let's do another example. I'm going to stick with uh, fluorine here with a minus one charge, but I'm going to use calcium with a two plus charge. Well, with a two plus and a minus one, I need two minus ones for every plus two. So I have CAF2. Uh, let's up it to AL3 plus. This is from group 13. Three plus with minus one. I'm going to need three of those fluorines for every one of those aluminum ions. And so I have ALF3. Okay, let's switch it up. Let's say I have a plus one and a minus two, like with sodium and oxygen here. Well, I'm going to need two of those plus ones for every one minus two. In other words, I'm going to need two sodium ions for every one oxygen ion. So I end up with Na2O. And then I want to show you this here, uh, Mg2 plus and O2 minus. You may be thinking right now you'd need two of each because you're seeing that these numbers are both twos, but one of each will do. A two plus will cancel out a, a two minus and you'll end up with an overall zero charge. Now let me show you this crisscross method because I think this is maybe something that some of you have already noticed for yourself, but I just want to point it out. There's a quick way to do this. If you know the charges of the substances and you take the number of the charge, like for example in aluminum with the three, bring that three down as the subscript of the other element. Same thing here, bring that two down as the sub subscript of the first element, and what you end up with is the correct formula. Now this will always work. The only issue, and this is kind of the only wrinkle here, is that if your resulting subscripts can be reduced, in other words, they can be divided by a whole number to yield whole numbers, then you want to do that. So in this case, I can't divide 2 and 3 by something to also give me whole numbers. So Al2O3 is the correct formula for this. Okay, so here are four more examples. Um, pause the video now, try putting together the correct ionic formula for these ions, and the answers will pop up right now. So here they are, PBI2, uh, Li3N, SCS, SC2, S3, and then look at this last one here. Maybe if you did the crisscross method here, you would have gotten MN204. We don't want to have MN204 as the formula because look at that, 2 and the 4 can be reduced. So MN1, which we wouldn't write, so MNO2 is the correct formula for that. Okay, so that's it. That's writing ionic formulas. The point here is that it really doesn't matter what the element is. It just matters what its charge is. And that's kind of the take home point. If you can get that in, um, then you're in great shape. Thank you.